Well, here we are in part seven of this tutorial series to put this together. Now, it's been a complete whirlwind through all of this code. I hope you're keeping up. And if you're still with me at this point, well done. And your efforts will be rewarded when you get your uh, quasi game working. OK, so what we need to do now is destroy the viruses after their alive value, which is in your virus data is set to false. Now we will do this inside of our timed destroyed system script. You could put this into a separate script, but I'm just going to put it into here. Now when your item gets destroyed, you also want to instantiate at the same position a whole bunch of white blood cells. So the blood cells need to be created, made into entities and passed through to here somehow. So what I'm going to do is actually go back to my ECS manager and create them in here with everything else. So we've got our red blood here. Let's just copy that and I'm going to make it a white one. Now I'm also going to create an entity like I did with the bullet here, but what I'm going to do is make it a public static entity and let's call it white blood so that we can access it from that other script. Then let's go down here into the start where we've created bullet. We will copy that and we will actually set this to white blood and put in here our white blood prefab. Okay, that's all you need to do with your white blood cell at this point. Now what I'm going to do is go back into Unity, go to my ECS manager and actually assign that white blood cell into there because I always forget and then I press play and it's not there. So white blood, there's my white blood cell and I'm just going to drag and drop it up into there. Okay, now if we just remind ourselves of this white blood cell, what's on there and just for me too, I'm just checking we've got our physics shape and our physics body on there and we've turned our gravity off so that it's not going to fall. Great. So let's go into our timed destroyed code. And we're basically going to do the same thing again. We have to use a with structural changes and a run. We can't use a parallel job in this case that you schedule because we're making structural changes. So I'm just copying that and putting it down here. And then instead of lifetime data, we're going to bring through things that have virus data on them. So we want virus data. Let's change this to virus data. And then our if statement is going to be if virus data dot alive. And if we're actually not alive, then we're going to destroy the virus. Now, at the same time, we want to instantiate a whole bunch of white blood cells. So let's put some squigglies around there. And what I'm going to do in here before I actually destroy that is to use its position to position my white blood cells. So we're going to have a little for loop. So for int i equals zero and i is less than 100 i plus plus so this is how many of those white blood cells we're going to instantiate you might want less you might want more um, totally up to you so let's create an offset that we will put them at because we don't want them all at the exact same position and again i'm going to put them in a little bit of a circle so uh, float three and Let's make that a float three too, so we don't get an error. Unity engine dot random dot inside unit sphere times 2.0 F. Then we're going to get our instantiation of our, I'm going to call it splat, which is our white blood cell equals the ECS manager dot manager dot instantiate ECS manager dot splat. 
Okay. Oh, not it's not dot splat, is it? It was a white blood. Okay, so that's created it. Now we can create um, a direction that we might want to add onto that. So we want to send it off in a certain uh, direction with a certain velocity because it's a physics object so that we can do that actually here by setting its value rather than having to have a, a move value. And then we just let the physics system and its momentum carry it on. Okay, so random dir equals new float three and this will be unity dot random dot range between minus one and one for our x and then we want to do the same make that engine for our x our y and our z sorry so y and z Okay, and then ECS manager dot manager dot set component data for our splat new translation value will equal position dot value. This is the position of the virus which is coming through here. And then we want to add our offset value onto that and then ECS manager dot manager dot set component data for the splat again and this will be a new physics velocity linear equals random dir and I'm going to multiply that by two just to give it a little bit of an extra push. So this is kind of the speed at which your uh, white blood cells will sort of splatter away from the uh, actual point that they get spawned at. Okay so that's uh, yeah that's pretty much it. So let's save that. And now let's go back into Unity and we're all ready to try this out. Right, so press play and let's have a look around. We should be able to now explode these particles. Now, the thing we haven't done is to destroy those white blood cells so we're going to end up with a whole bunch of them floating around forever and ever and ever uh, and because we're constantly creating them we might want to have a time to destroy on them which is pretty easy because we've already got that code so there's our white blood cell prefab there we just need to add onto it a lifetime data so put that over there and then just set it in whatever you want those to be here. So if you want them to be floating around for a while, maybe, you know, set it to five seconds. And um, after that, they'll then just be removed from the actual simulation. Okay, so we'll just press play again, have one more look. Um, and yeah, there we go. So I hope you have enjoyed putting this together. I've really enjoyed making it. My favourite part, I guess, is making all of these particles that the ECS allows you to do and then putting the maths on it that actually gets them to move around like they are now. Um, it's just lots of fun. Okay, so uh, now you can embellish this with sounds and that like I did right at the beginning and showed you there. The solution file for this all put together will be available for Patreons and anyone that's doing my course on Udemy. So remember, uh, if you want to look more into the ECS and to get more of an understanding of all the stuff that I've actually just gone whizzed straight through really quickly because there's so much content to cover, then do look into that course which goes through step by step all of the different pieces and explains what's going on and the way that ECS actually works and how it works to optimize memory and use parallel processing which is really what's speeding up everything in all of these Unity demos that you're seeing all over the place. Okay so 
Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.